thinking another mom hacks video you just posted one two months ago can things really have changed that much yes toddlerhood is fast paced and we have to keep up I'll link down below all my other mom hack videos I think I probably have like six seven eight now I have a lot but I'm telling you they're all gold PS if you like my mom hack videos, make sure to like this one. That way I know to make more of them. This first hack is for us moms who are going through the battle of a toddler not wanting to wear clothing, shoes, hats, get their hair done. It's totally normal. And this is everything I have found that works. Like I have multiple different ways to troubleshoot this problem. The first simplest approach you can take is just giving your child two options that are weather appropriate. This works for us for a long time. Your toddler wants some control over their life and giving them choices can really help. If this stops working, you can go into phase two, which is getting clothes with their favorite characters, cartoons on it. They might be more likely to wear something that they, you know, they really enjoy seeing on TV or in a book. I know this tip works for a lot of people. This one actually didn't work for me so we went to phase three which is a costume my daughter really loves tutus and dresses and dressing up which is so funny because i dressed her kind of like a boy for the most of her babyhood and now she's really kind of coming into her own and what she likes and princess dresses so i guess this is kind of like a caricature like bell dress cinderella dress she will wear those spider-man costumes she'll wear that honestly if you're at phase three you're just trying to get clothes on to go outside and do some kind of normal routine without a naked child we unfortunately got to phase four which is now kind of tricking your toddler into finding excitement clothes look like dressing up the dolls in the clothes before you can do it yourself compliment the doll Ooh, good job doll, you look so pretty. If you have a dog who is really chill, my pug is super chill, I will actually put like a, you know, like a little sweater, not fully on with the legs or anything, but just over her head, and I'll be like, good job doggy, you look so pretty. Like we're gonna go out on a walk, good job, so cute. And this one really, really works for my toddler. When I give like the love and attention and admiration for my dog wearing the clothes, she almost, like 99% of the time will be like, I, like I want to wear it like I want to put it on so you know it's a lot of it's a lot of mind games there's a lot of phases here but wherever you are I'm hoping one of these works for you if you have a toddler that won't wear clothes or shoes no matter what your battle is I hope one of these works for you number two the no phase are you getting a lot of no's when you ask questions well are you asking questions with the option of a no if you really need to get out of the house and you say do you want to put shoes on you're giving your toddler the ability because they now understand this to say no they have a choice they answered your question so instead of phrasing something do you want to put shoes on can you put shoes on you say let's put shoes on so you aren't giving them a yes or no option you're giving them a statement you're giving them not an order but you're giving them direction you think about how you are phrasing what you are saying to your toddler and if you are asking them a question in a way that they can say yes or no you have to respect in a way when they say no because it is an important lesson to teach early on that no means no and there's this you know little game you have to play of okay i have to respect my child saying no so i need to rephrase my questions in a way where i won't get a no another way of looking about this instead of saying let's put on shoes would be to give two options saying do you want mommy to put on shoes or do you want to put on your shoes so 
you're kind of still giving them a choice, but you're not really entertaining the option of a no. Number three, toddler cleanup. I've talked about in other videos how I use the clean up cleanup song and toddlers are, they get more and more rebellious. And so you gotta get kind of more and more crafty. They're processing and learning so much information. They're all over the place. And so I do still sing the clean up cleanup song, but help inspire your toddler to clean up by literally just handing them an item as you're cleaning up. So if you're putting toys in a bucket, hand them one of those same toys and clean up, clean up, everybody clean up. And just them physically holding the item instead of letting them go and pick it up and put it in can really help just inspire them to get the ball rolling and then you know you don't have to keep handing them items they'll start helping with the cleanup clean up clean up everybody everywhere can you hold this clean up everybody does their share this is awkward to film because i don't actually have my toddler right now but she would have helped me clean up with that little maneuver just can you hold this as i'm cleaning this up Trust. I really just wanted to add to my old hack here because, you know, like I said, as toddlers evolve and they evolve quickly, we have to keep evolving with our strategies. Number four, do you have items of your own that your toddler constantly takes from you? It's a very simple fix. Get toddler items that look like adult items. I'll show, I, I'll just show you. I got this set. It comes in a set of two and I think this one was blue and pink, but they have other colors if you want to do other ones. But it is very similar, but small. It'd be great for smoothies too, because I've been doing a lot of smoothies. It was actually really hard to find a good toddler cup that you could easily get a smoothie out of, and I'll link these down below. But yeah, anything you find that they are always taking of yours, get a toddler dupe. Dupe it up. Side note, this phone case I also just got from Amazon. I'll link it down below. Anything you see in this video, or see me wearing in every single video, I try really hard to link down below. So if you have any questions, leave in the comments. If it's not in the description already, I'll let you know, but usually it's there. Number five, make your village your team. So for example, I just did potty training and I did the Big Little Feelings course and it's a pretty hefty course to commit to. I mean, it's like an hour and a half, two hours if you watch it all the way through. If you don't know, I co-parent, so of course I had the father watch this video because it is so important if you are starting baby lead weaning, some type of sleep schedule, sleep training, potty training. If you're taking a course for anything, anyone who's in your village, grandparents, if you have a babysitter, if you have a nanny, if you have friends that help out, a partner, you are not the only person in charge of learning this information. I make it a point, have the grandparents watch the potty training class, have dad watch it. Toddlers, kids are so prone to routine and consistency and it will really harm their progression on these things if things are inconsistent at different houses with different people. I will say this is something I didn't do with baby lead weaning, at least with the grandparents. And it is like a newer thing. And so I definitely noticed the grandparents being very confused and timid and scared about baby lead weaning. They did let me approach it and, you know, kind of carve the way but i think if they watched the courses like i did and just had the same understanding i did instead of you know me saying little snippets here and there when it would come up would have really made the process smoother which is why i made that change for potty training and it did make that so much smoother even if i forgot something in the course and i was doing something differently i would have another teammate another part of my village being like hey i think they said like this if you want to do it differently just let me know i just want to do it on the same page and i'd be like oh my god mom brain you're so right thank you and it was it was so much smoother number six the bug out bag which is just the diaper bag but i call it a bug out bag because like a bug out bag it's always prepared and i've done a what's in my newborn bag and it has changed so much obviously and if you have a potty training kid newly potty training kid this is going to be what's in my toddler bag things that are always in my bug out toddler newly potty trained bag are a travel potty seat cover you're still going to want baby wipes you're going to want 
honestly three pairs depending on like how long you're gonna be out but I, they're small so I just keep three pairs you're also gonna want to have two pairs of pants because with those accidents they go through the pants and they go down to the feet and back a pair of socks and shoes if you can fit shoes in there a lot of times we just do crocs which of course if there's an accident you can just kind of rinse off in the sink and that way you don't need two pairs of shoes so another kind of hack within a hack. another top or a sweater depending on the season a snack or two if i am going out to a restaurant i will pack some type of entertainment but that's not usually in my bag so this is these are like my bug out bag always in necessities number seven just like the bug out bag we have a bug in box what it really is is a sick box when we're living that toddler life whether it's daycare a gym class pre preschool preschool whatever it may be your toddler is going to catch a lot of colds sicknesses especially in the winter it's just a well-known thing as healthy as your child is and as you are and as much healthy nutrition it is just part of toddlerhood they're they're gonna get sick the worst thing when you have a sick toddler is to realize you don't have something that they need and you have to take a sick toddler out or order stuff in and then you have to be with them and they have to suffer and it is so key just to be overly prepared to me really these are the essentials i always have stocked up number eight i really liked and this might be a personal choice using training underwear before underwear the way that they differ is training underwear looks and feels like underwear but there is a little extra layer that can help leaks accidents not leak out but they don't feel like pull-ups or diapers they still feel like underwear again it is a little bit of an extra thing but with potty training, accidents are normal, especially, you know, if you go out and have longer periods of time and you're trying to navigate public restrooms. There might be an accident, there might be a leak, and it is nice to have it not go through the pants every single time, and that way you just have to change one thing. Number nine, vitamins. Now, of course, I am just a person on the internet, and you should always speak to your pediatrician, someone with actual knowledge, a medical degree, before just listening to me, but, I have started my daughter on vitamins from the same brand I use. It is Mary Ruth's and I've tried their gummies for adults and their liquid vitamin, which I'm using right now and actually really, really like and recommend if you're looking for a daily vitamin. They do make toddler daily vitamins. They're just these little gummies. They get one a day and my daughter loves them. She understands the one a day concept. She looks forward to it. Number 10, poop chocolate. <laughs> poop chocolate i know i know how that sounds but i'm telling you your toddler is going to love this i will say i cannot take this recipe as my own it's something i learned in the big little feelings potty training course it's only two ingredients and it's so simple and my toddler is obsessed with the poop chocolate no there is no poop in the chocolate it is chocolate to make a toddler poop. So with potty training, a lot of times a toddler can hold it because it's all new and if you run into this issue or just in general, if your toddler is constipated, if you're constipated, you would eat the poop chocolate. Pretty much all you do is melt chocolate chips and coconut oil. I think it's equal parts, half, half. This is where you can get creative with the mold. My mom makes little pigs for her poop chocolate. You put the molds in the freezer and then keep these little poop chocolates in the refrigerator because the coconut oil makes them very, very melty. They're very, very messy. I will warn you, when you eat them, they, they're the kind of chocolate that melt in your hand, so have a baby wipe ready, but your toddler will probably scarf them down pretty quickly. Every little human is gonna process and regulate the poop chocolate differently. For example, I don't give the poop chocolate two hours before a nap or before we go out or before bedtime because I wanna give it that time to work and I don't want it to work when my child is sleeping. It might take your little human more or less time to you know, have it work and it's not like a laxative, it's nothing crazy. It just helps make it a more you know, smooth experience. It's not like they're gonna eat it and then 
poop themselves a hundred times. I think I have said poop enough. Those are my 10 mom hacks. If you liked any of them, make sure you give this video a like so I know to make more of these. And again, anything I talked about in this video is in the video description. Let me know in the comments down below or all of us know if you have any mom toddler hacks that have saved you, really work for you. And I will see you next Monday. Bye. Bye.